Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Okay, we have seen the infinitesimal dipole uh, in the previous slide. So now we are going to discuss on the finite length of dipole when the L is between uh, lambda over 50 to lambda over 10. Okay, and uh, better approximation of the current uh, from the dipole can be uh, approximated by using a triangular approximation or variation and it is assumed that the uh, dipole antenna is oriented along the z-axis and it is positioned uh, symmetrically about the origin okay so it is a center fat at the origin and the uh, and it is symmetrical for both arm the upper and the bottom arm. Okay, let's look at the mathematical analysis for a finite length dipole antenna. So the ideal current distribution for a finite length dipole antenna can be approximated by using this equation. So the IE is the uh, electrical current which uh, constitute of the upper arm and the bottom arm a dipole antenna. This is the upper arm and bottom arm and center fat okay and the uh, electric and magnetic uh, component of the finite length of antenna uh, is given by this equation where the r equal to r minus uh, z cos theta for the first term so for the first term r equal to r minus z cos theta while the uh, capital R at the bottom represent the amplitude term this one can be replaced by small letter R okay in terms of the illustration so the R here representing the phase which is equal to R z minus cos theta and the small letter R representing the magnitude okay from the uh, any point uh, on the conductor or on the dipole to the uh, observation point P. So the R is equal to capital R in terms of magnitude. So uh, the uh, total field radiated from the dipole antenna basically uh, constitute of two components which are the element factor and the space factor. So the left hand side represent the element factor while the uh, right hand side in the bracket is the space factor. Okay, after some uh, mathematical manipulation and variation, so the total component of the electrical and magnetic uh, of the uh, dipole antenna is reduced to uh, this equation where C is the Euler's constant and uh, the HV uh, is uh, approximated to E theta divided by the uh, intrinsic impedance. Okay. Based on the equation that we have seen earlier for finite length um, dipole antenna, so let's uh, assume that we have a half wavelength dipole antenna with L equal to lambda. Over two. This is the uh, representing the half wavelength dipole antenna. So the L in the equation will be replaced by uh, lambda over two. Okay, these are the uh, equations for the average power density WAV and the radiation intensity and also the total radiated power of a half wavelength a dipole antenna. So C here is the uh, constant. For specifically for lambda over 2 dipole antenna, C in is equal to C in 2 pi is equal to 2.435. And for the maximum directivity of the half wavelength dipole antenna or lambda over 2 um, dipole antenna, so the directivity as the general equation equal to 4 pi u divided by p red. So from the previous slide, we have seen that the P red equal to C into pi equal to 2.435. So the um, 
maximum directivity for a half wavelength dipole antenna is equal to 1.643. And the maximum effective area, AEM, equal to lambda over 2. So in this case, uh, it is a half wavelength dipole antenna. So the directivity is from here. Okay, so the maximum effective area for a half wavelength dipole antenna. So this is half wavelength dipole antenna. Okay, the effective area is equal to 0 0.13 lambda squared. And the radiation resistance for a half wavelength dipole antenna, assuming that it is in free space, so the intrinsic impedance equal to 120 pi equal to. 73 and the input impedance for a half wavelength dipole antenna usually represented as z in and it is equal to 73 the real part of the uh, radiation resistance plus the imaginary part or the reactance of the uh, impedance component uh, so for half wavelength dipole antenna the imaginary part is equal to G42.5, uh, uh, which reflect the L equal to lambda over 2. And uh, the imaginary part can be eliminated or can be removed by uh, reducing or modifying the antenna length slightly. Okay, and But it depends on the radius of the wire we use for the antenna dipole antenna design which usually uh, the resonance occurs when the length of the dipole antenna is about 0 0.47 lambda to 0 0.48 lambda. Okay, the graph shows uh, the input impedance of a half wavelength of a dipole antenna. So it depends on the uh, dipole length. So for example, if you have a half wavelength, so 0 0.5 if lambda over 2, dipole antenna so we can see the crossing here so the dot the dash line represent the rr the radiation resistance for uh, a half wavelength dipole antenna is somewhere here so it's around 73 ohm and uh, it's crossing this line as well and this is for d not the directivity of uh, a half wavelength dipole antenna is around here 1.6 something okay as the previous slide and what else from here you have two lines and uh, okay so this is how uh, the uh, properties of the dip uh, an antenna usually being plotted so that we can measure uh, the uh, characteristic of the antenna depending on the uh, the length or the, in terms of wavelength of the antenna. Okay, this table summarizes uh, the different properties of the dipole antenna depending on the length of the antenna beginning uh, from the infinite small dipole up to the uh, finite length dipole specifically lambda over 2 or half wavelength dipole and when lambda the L equal to lambda. So the uh, radiation resistance, uh, the directivity gained and etc. will be varied according to the uh, parameters we set or we are about to achieve during the design process. Okay, next, let's discuss on the feeding technique, how to feed the dipole antenna, assuming that uh, the antenna length is lambda over 2. So the dipole is actually a balanced structure, so in which we we'll see that both arms are in equal length. So this is so in total it is lambda over two. So fat at the center, okay, and it is a balanced structure. Uh, and usually the uh, dipole antenna will be fed by a coaxial uh, cable. So, and the coaxial, uh, when the uh, dipole antenna is connected to a coaxial cable, so one arm is connected to the 
outer part of the uh, coaxial, so which produce uh, the unequal current uh, magnitude on both arms. Okay, if you look at this image, when uh, okay, this arm is connected to a coaxial cable, so the total current flow is now the red lines, which is not in the same magnitude as on the other arm. So it uh, produce imbalance structure. So in order to uh, eliminate the uh, imbalance or additional current, so we need to add additional structure known as balloon uh, so that um, the current uh, on both arms will be in the same magnitude. Okay, so uh, the outer side of shield of coax, as I mentioned earlier, it carry current. Okay, so the total, the net current is no longer the same as the other arm. So uh, the current may uh, cause the structure radiates. Okay, uh, while it is not supposed to. Okay, so we when we fit the uh, dipole antenna by using a coaxial line, so we need to use a balloon, so which uh, used to balance the unbalanced system. Alright, so the dipole antenna is the balanced structure, so and the uh, coaxial line or cable is not a balanced structure, unbalanced structure. So a balloon is used to balance the unbalanced system. Right, so the balance transfer power between the single ended coax and the balance antenna. Uh, sometimes with additional change in impedance. So there are two uh, examples of a uh, balloon, which are bazooka and also the folded balloon, or also known as lambda or four or quarter wave plane balloon. All right, so the idea is uh, it produced the short circuit sleeve. Okay, so in this case, uh, the current will be shorted together. Okay, so that uh, the uh, total current in both arms are in equal magnitude. Okay, another types of uh, wire antenna is monopole antenna, so which is uh, a single element antenna usually fed at the bottom. So it is a single element antenna, it's fed at the bottom with the shield side of it unbalanced transmission line connected to the ground. So this is the ground, so it is fed at the bottom and it behaves as dipole antenna and the ground okay this ground is considered to be a conductive surface okay usually the crown here is the conducting uh, surface as well as as well as the uh, radiator so this the antenna is the radiator and in monopole antenna the ground plane uh, is also a conductor so the conductive surface would acts as a reflector in which it produces vertical color current have in the same direction as the radiator. So this is the radiator, so this is the ground plane. So it produces reflected image which have uh, the magnitude current as similar as the upper part of the radiator. Okay, in terms of the total emitted power and radiation resistance of a monopole antenna, it is basically half of the uh, emitted power and the radiation resistance of a dipole antenna. So the input impedance of the monopole antenna is half of the input impedance of the dipole. So, so this is for the monopole. So for the dipole, we have 73 plus G40. 2.5 and for the monopole we have a half of it 36.5 plus G21.25 while for the uh, total 
um, ready the radiated power the emitted power it is also half of the uh, dipole and in terms of the uh, directivity the directivity of the monopole antenna is actually double the uh, directivity of the dipole antenna and some application of a monopole antenna is in automotive AM antennas, naval low frequency antennas and uh, some applications in very high frequency broadcasting system. Okay, with that, thank you. Next, we are going to look at uh, another applications of the wire antenna, which is the Yagi antenna.